Before we get into episode 6 of the Mariners franchise, I just want to update you guys on what exactly happened to the last episode. Uh, a lot of you guys had the error where it like, would not load when you tried to click it to play or whatever. I honestly have no idea what happened, and I could not re-upload the video because I deleted the file before I was aware of the issue. So I apologize on that part. To give you guys a quick recap, I, we won, I believe, by a final score of like 8-3 to three or something like that. It was tied late, but we got a bunch of runs off the Rays' bullpen. We did go up against the Rays and Taiwan Walker. Walker pitched okay. We had Danny Holson go. He was okay. No, we did not have Danny Holson go. We had Iwakuma go. He was okay as well. It was kind of shaky, but anyway, we got the win. So without further ado, here is episode 6. Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston, aka the King of Boston. Today, we're back for episode 6 of the Seattle Mariners franchise. And you can see we're starting things out, getting a trade offer from the Pittsburgh Pirates, which I originally thought, uh, hold on, I'm not trading two top prospects for Gregory Polanco. Polanco. But the, when I looked into Gregory Polanco, he's an 80 overall center fielder, 8 potential, great ratings already. And I only had to give up DJ Patterson. Now, I like DJ Patterson. But, or Peterson, not Patterson, Peterson. But Gregory Blanco fills a much bigger need. I, you know, I've I detailed it before. Our outfield is just dreadful at times. I mean, Marlon Byrd has been pretty bad for us. Dustin Ackley is okay. We have like Gutierrez and Bloomquist can play the outfield. Corey Hart and Lomo can, but it's not really their natural positions. I guess Lomo came up as a left fielder, but still, he's not really strong defensively out there. So, I that was a really good trade. You kind of get this uh, piece for the future in the shape of an outfielder, whereas first base, which is DJ Peterson's position, is kind of filled. I like Corey Hart. I really like Justin Spoke. He's had the best year out of anyone on our team right now. Um, yeah, I like Justin Spoke. I like Lomo a little bit. I mean, he's going to be cheap talent for a couple more years until he hits arbitration. Even when he hits arbitration, he's still going to be pretty cheap talent. So, you know, I like what Lomo gives us. Um, and we really don't need a first base prospect coming up anytime soon. And he's just Montero can play first base, and he's actually performed pretty, uh, Pretty solid off the off the bench coming off the bench since about May this year. But anyway, we're going up against the Boston Red Sox in this ball game. We need to the pitching matchup is James Paxton versus Jake Peavy. And you saw earlier Danny Holton has recovered from his in injury. He will go back to the rotation. We send back down Carson Smith and Blake Bevin moves back to the bullpen. I believe it's Bevin, not Bevin. People have been telling me. I think the game calls him Bevin as well. But take a look at today's starting lineups for both squads. Normal lineup for the Seattle Mariners. So you can see the Red Sox a little bit different than. Uh, you might see in real life, they do not have Jacoby Ellsbury anymore, obviously. They do have Trevor Crow in his place instead of, uh, Jac oh my god, I blanked on his name, Jackie Bradley Jr., but nonetheless, top of the first, PV gets through it without any, uh, scares or anything, does allow one base under, but he could not advance past first base. Here's Trevor Crow up 2-2 two -two count, and Crow's gonna go down, looking down at 97 mile an hour heater from James Paxton. Paxton's had a pretty solid year, much better than Danny Holton has. Hasn't put up phenomenal stats, but it's been pretty decent. Exactly what I want out of my 4 or 5. And not to mention, he's a, a potential prospect. So he gets Danny, or not Danny, Dustin Bedroya to do that little nibbler back to him. And he will retire the out of first base. So top two, Mike Zanino up first pitch of the AB from Jake PV. And Zanino's going to hit this one, but a great sliding stop by Xander Bogart. Picks it up and fires to first base for the out. There is Mike Napoli, who was re signed by the Red Sox over there at first base for the first, I believe, or second out of the inning, but nonetheless into the bottom of the second, and Johnny Gomes is going to go down. Gomes, the left-handed hitting specialist in this ball game because of James Paxton starting, but he looks silly right there as Paxton gets him to go down swinging just behind on that fastball. Paxton can really rev it up, and that was a great pitch. Marlon Bird up here, first pitch of the A-B in the top of the third inning, and Bird shoots this one into left field, but that is right at the left fielder, and that is going to be the first out of the inning, I believe. So here we go, top of the fourth. Robinson Cano is up first pitch of the A-B to him, and Cano is going to finally get us a base runner here. He gets on first base, and that will give us a leadoff single and a leadoff base runner, so hopefully we can get some someone home. It's been a pitcher's duel so far. Kyle Seeger up two batters later. Runner advances to second base, but there's one out. Seeger's going to hit that one back up the middle for a base. We're going to hold Cano at third with just one out, and I did not feel like testing Trevor Crow's arm. The throw was a little bit offline, but uh, Cano not a fast runner, so we hold him. Now the next batter is Mike Zanino, the first pitch of the A-B. From the stretch, PV kicks and deals, and wow, hang that curveball a little bit more there, Jake PV, and that might have been all the way into Cambridge. Wow, that was just crushed. And Mike Zanino taking that one all the way over the green monster into Lansdowne Street. Probably into that parking lot behind Lansdowne Street, but on the other side, I should say. Nonetheless, a beautiful, beautiful home run by Mike Zanino right there. Take a look at the replay. He absolutely smacked that. Awful pitch from Jake PV. One mistake cost him three runs right there. And just like that, it is a 3 nothing ball game. Mariners on top as that one indeed does go over the green monster. So here we go. Bottom of the fourth inning. Trevor Crow up once you count. Crow's already struck out once today. He's going to go down again. Nice little changeup right there from James Paxton. Gets Crow to go down. You've seen the fastball from Paxton. 
Jackson. Now you're seeing seeing a little bit of the changeup, mixing in speeds, different locations. Great job by him so far. Top five first pitch of the A.B. to Marlon Brady. Lined out already today. What's he going to do? He's going to do the exact same thing, lining that one right at the left fielder. Gomes did have to move a little bit to his right, but makes the catch pretty easily, and Bird has just been robbed so far today. But both shots have been right at Johnny Gomes. So here we go. Bottom of the fifth, Xander Borger trying to get things started here. Paxton, great play. Picks up and fires to first base. That was an impressive play, I thought, from James Paxton, showing off his range and his arm strength. So next batter is Will Middlebrooks. One, two, count. Middlebrooks is going to go down looking on the back door curveball. Beautiful pitch from Paxton. You've seen strikeouts on the fastball change up a curveball so far. That is the sign of a well-rounded pitcher. Top six here, 1-0 count to Corey Hart with one out in the inning. And Hart's going to shoot this one into right field. That could get down for a while, but Shane Victorino out there in right, playing like a center fielder, covering so much ground. That is why he won the 2013 Rawlings Gold Glove Award in right field for the AL. But here we go, bottom of the six, Shane up at the bat. Can he do something with his bat here? He's going to shoot that one all the way off the top of the green monster. This will be played by, it looks like Logan Morrison will fire into second base. But Victorino's in there easily with a leadoff double. And that is going to give the Red Sox a chance to try and get some runs on the board with the meat of their order coming up. As Shane, we saw him hit it off the monster in Game 6 of the World Series. We see him do it again. That was a leadoff double, excuse me. Trevor Crow up next. Crow is going to hit this one into right field for a base hit. There is Marlon Bird to field it. He's going to try and fire this one home, but Victorino is just too fast. And Trevor Crow's RBI single makes it a 3-1 ball game. So, Red Sox trying to mount a little bit of a comeback here. Still no outs in the inning. And the three floor guys coming up next. Dustin Madroya up 1 1 count. Madroya is going to shoot this one to deep right field. Marlon Bird has to go back a ways, but he makes the running catch. Very impressive catch by Marlon Bird. Not really known for his defensive abilities, but he shows off the range right there. And now we still have a runner on first base with one out. But before we get to that, check a look at this replay. Marlon Bird finding that extra gear right there at the end. That was pretty impressive to me. So Mike Napoli up next, 0-1 count, and Napoli to deep left field, a no-doubter well over the green monster, and that is a two-run home run, and that is a tie ball game. Napoli's two-run home run ties this game up off of James Paxton. Napoli kills left-handers about as much as Mike Napoli could do. I mean, I'm not exactly saying he's a triple crown winner off left-handers, but he performs, he excels against left-handers more so than he does against right-handers. And he's showing it right there as his two-run home run ties up this ball game. Manager John Farrell very excited, as you could imagine. And Napoli rounding the bases, touches home plate. And just like that, both uh, both teams getting three runs in one inning so far. It's kind of been a, uh, a battle of lightning strike, so to say, in, in just the sense that both teams have gotten runs very quickly in this game for their runs. But here we go later in the inning. That's going to be a 6-4-3 double play. That was induced by Paxton to end off the inning, so we're through six innings. Let's take a look at the six-inning recap. Both teams pretty even so far, the only difference being the hits. Boston has one more. Zanino and Napoli both with big home runs. Paxton's pitched pretty well, I thought. We're into the top of the seventh, Marlon Bird up, and Marlon Bird again hits the ball very, very hard. Maybe we know why he's hitting 218 heading into this ball game because he just keeps lining it right at players. But nonetheless, bottom seven, Christian Vasquez up. Vasquez tries to check his swing, but he cannot... And that is going to be strike three swinging to make it two outs in the inning. Paxton continuing to deal here, even into a seventh inning of work. But we're going to head to the top of the eighth, where Craig Breslow is going to come on for the Boston Red Sox. Leadoff batter is, I believe, a uh, it's Nick Franklin. He's going to shoot that one to center field for a base hit. Crow over to field, fired into the cutoff man. But that's going to give us a leadoff base hit. Now, still no outs in the inning. Dustin Ackley up. Ackley's going to pop up the bunt. So a poor attempt right there. I could not decide if I wanted to bunt immediately or not, so I ended up trying to drag bunt it, and that just did not work. But Cano's going to hit that to the second base, and diving play by Dustin Bedroy. Fires to first in time. Franklin was off on the pitch, though, so he's actually going to get over to third base safely. Although, with two outs, not really much of a difference between being a second and third. But check out this amazing play by the 2013 Gold Glove Award winner, the multi-Gold Glove Award winner, Dustin Pedroia. What an impressive play showing why he was the best defensive second baseman in the AL this past season. Napoli's fire throw to third would not be in time, so we got a runner on third with an 0-2 count. Corey Hart up, and Corey Hart is going to strike out at that pitch in the dirt. Vasquez fires to first base in time, and that will retire the side. So we're into the bottom of the eighth year. Blake Bevan is going to come on. He struggled in his couple of starts. You can see his area bloated a little bit or bloated a little bit. He was okay in the bullpen before moving in there, but uh, we'll see if he can come through in the bottom of the eighth. One-two count. Pedroia goes down, swinging on that nasty slider as Bevan had that pitch working for his outing here. So we're here into the bottom of the ninth inning. One-two count. Two Will Motorbooks, and once again, Bevan getting somebody to go down on the breaking stuff. Bevan really had his off-speed stuff working in this outing tonight. 
So here we go. Two out or one out in the inning. This is, I believe, Ryan Rayburn up 0-2 count. Rayburn goes down even with the go-ahead or winning run on first base. Mike Carp pinch hitter up 2-2 count. Carp's going to go down looking. Bevin strikes out the side, and we are headed to our first extra inning game of the season, at least in terms of gameplay that I've shown you guys this year. So top 10 Marlon Bird up. He had a couple really nice hits so far, or at least solid contact, not turning into hits. Looking for something there, but he is going to get out at first on that strike three call. Here, bottom 10, Nick Franklin up. Franklin's going to hit that one into left field for a base hit as we get a two-out base runner here looking for a spark plug from Nick Franklin in the top half of our order. Here is pinch hitter Willie Bloomquist. Bloomquist on the first pitch of the AB. He's going to shoot this one into the right field gap. But a diving play by Shade Victorino saves the day for the Boston Red Sox. That one gets by him. That's likely an RBI triple if not an inside the park home run. Fenway's got some big gaps, big gaps out there. But what a play by Shane. And now he's got a chance to do something in the bottom of the 10th. He leads off the inning with a leadoff base hit to center field. Bloomquist had replaced their pinch hit for Dustin Ackley at that point as they brought in the left-hander. Or as I guess, because uh, Breslow is still out there. So, anyway, they're going to sack or refice him over as we tag out Crow. But Shane does advance the second. Let's take a look. I don't even know how we got him here, but whatever. As you can see, Cano was not on the bag, but I guess he was called out for the tag. So, next batter is Dustin Madroya. 0 1 count. Madroya with a chance to give the Red Sox a lead, but a bad base running mistake by Shane Victorino. He's going to get thrown out. Badoria reaches first safely, but now it's a runner on first with two outs. Jonathan Herrera, who had pinch ran for Napoli earlier in the game, is going to ground that one to the shortstop. Nice play, Franklin, raging to his left. Flips it to Cano for the out, and that is going to wrap up this inning. We're on to the top of the 11th. Here's Corey Hart, and he's going to shoot this one into the right center field gap. This time it's getting down. No chance for Victorino to make a play on that. That's actually going to be a ground rule double as we get a runner in scoring position with a chance to try and take this lead. Still one out in the end of Kyle Seager up. And Seager's going to hit this one back off of the pitcher, Breslow. He will have no play as Seager was well safe at first base. And that is going to give us runners on first and third. Out comes Breslow. In comes Burke Badenoff, a acquisition er, an acquisition from the Milwaukee Brewers in the offseason. Here's Mike Zanino. Zanino's going to ground that one to the third baseman. A chance for two to save the game. Middlebrook's the second for one on the first. Not in time. Mike Zanino beats out the double play and gives us the lead. Now, keep in mind, Mike Zanino is slow as about as slow as Molasses. Middlebrook's kind of hesitates there. It looks like he just got an important animation and a great takeout slide from our man over there at first base. Gives us the run. 4-3 to three is the score. Justin Smoke up. Smoke is going to hit that one back up the middle for a base hit. With two outs. We're looking for the inning to continue here and try to get an extra insurance run. So up to the plate comes Jesus Montero with a chance to extend the lead. He hits that one down the left field line for a base hit. Here comes the runner. He's going to come home and score. And we're looking to get another man over there at third. Montero advances to second. And it's an RBI double for Jesus Montero. Next batter is pinch hitter John Hicks. Here we go. Top of the 11th still 0-1 count. And he's going to pop that one up to the center fielder. Trevor Crow coming in. He's going to make the catch backhanded. And that will retire the side. But we take a two-run lead into the bottom of the 11th inning. In comes our closer, our stud, our probable all-star, Danny Farquhar. 20 out of 21 on save opportunities this year, I believe. Or maybe it was 21 out of 22. I'm not even sure. But Will Motobus goes down on that heater right there. And now with two outs in the inning runner on first. Trevor Crow up. That's Ryan Rayburn. Excuse me. I always get those guys confused with their stances. But... There we go, Rayburn goes down on the slider, strike three swinging, and the Mariners take home the victory. 5-3, to three, took extra innings, but we'll take it. As you saw earlier in the episode, uh, before the game started, we were, I believe, like eight games out of first place. We need everyone we can get at this point. Anyway, it's going to do it for me. I want to thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And this is a out. Peace.